Well, if there's a more beautiful morning than this, I certainly haven't seen it. Uh, this is on the shores of Loch Nakeel and in the heart of Mull, and I'm heading up Ben Moor, which is over there. Ben Moor uh, is a Munro, of course, one that many people, people who are making the full round of the whole 280 whatever it is, uh, often save till last because it's out by itself on an island on Mull. It's uh, outside of Sky. it's the only Munro on any of the islands. It's not to say there aren't big hills elsewhere in the Hebrides, uh, there are, but Benmore is the highest of them, again outside Sky on the island. So it's, uh, people sort of like to make the trip out because it's, they make a weekend of it, a couple of days, and uh, invite all the friends and go up and do this as their last one. It most definitely isn't my last one. Uh, I've lost count now of what I'm at. Stopped counting a while back. But uh, I have a few to go. But that's not going to stop me from going up there now. It is just the most stunning, stunning morning. There was a frost this morning, it's uh, towards the end of March now, but it was very cold this morning, there was a frost, not a breath of wind. We had aurora last night as well, northern lights here in Mull. I got managed to get a couple of really, really, quite decent picks actually. It was uh, the strongest solar storm in, uh, in quite a long time, certainly the strongest of this solar cycle. So uh, there's uh, good photos coming in from all over um, the west and the north. Uh, so that was great last night, but then it's just dawn for this incredible day. Utterly flat water, not a breath of wind. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm half tempted just to stay here by the loch. I mean, it's so achingly beautiful, it's amazing. Oh, wow. What a beautiful day. This is actually my fourth day, fourth full day on Mull, and I've had weather like this every day, um, pretty much. A bit windier than this. If it's been sunny, it's actually been quite windy. I went out to Iona and that was quite windy. Uh, but it's been sunny and it's been dry. So this uh, is amazing. This is actually the last day. Tomorrow, it's gonna get a bit uh, grottier and maybe even rain. So if I, uh, if I do nothing else for the rest of this week, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, if I do nothing else, I'll be so chuffed with what I have achieved. And coming up Ben Moore today is just uh, just the icing on the cake. Well, I've come a couple of kilometres along the road and I've turned south into the hills a bit earlier than you would normally do for this route because there's a industrial development springing up there which I think it's up here there's a it looks like hydro development going in maybe I can see it's either a pipe or a cable up there uh, so I'm sure the path up by there is actually drier than the one I'm walking through but I don't gonna go I don't want to go walking past JCBs and vans and stuff on the morning as beautiful as this so I'll give them a wide berth and head up the side up there. I'm actually heading to that hill in the distance that you can see, this one here. There's a pass in between. Uh, there's Ben Atta on the left and uh, here on the right. And uh, this ridge is supposed to be quite quite fun. And then you go to the top of uh, here and over to Ben Moore again via Quite, not a knife edge I don't think, but occasionally has its moments. Knife edge type of ridge, which gives a very steep approach up to the top of Ben Moor. It makes it a bit more interesting than just heading up from where I parked the car down there and slogging up the side. Always try and find the more interesting routes. Well, it's hard going, it's hot. <sighs> Nothing like better on a wall than the sound of a pneumatic drill to accompany me. Uh, this must, I'm assuming it's hydro that they're putting in. 
Uh, hell of a place to work, hell of a place to get to. Bit of an undertaking, digging uh, pipes, <coughs> or whatever it is they're putting in, cables all the way down the, in this terrain. Must be so sopping wet. Anyway, they've made a fairly hefty scar. It looks like they've put hardcore down as well, in between where they've dug it up. I'm assuming they're required to actually cover that up again afterwards, I would have thought. There's a lot of small-scale hydro stuff going in around Scotland at the moment. Uh, a lot of it's very low impact and uh, doesn't leave any visible scar at all, but other ones, there's new tracks being driven up uh, remote glens. There is one on the side of Ben Kruken, actually, uh, near Dal Mali. Um, enormous great big track, all the way up one of the remote corries. I was quite surprised to see it. I'm, I'm kind of surprised it was allowed. Anyway. Pressing on. Ugh, it's not as boggy up here, thankfully, he says. Just about as he squelches into another bog. Uh, but it is hot. I'm, uh, I'm reluctant to say, but I'm going to say it anyway, that you can have too much of a good thing. It is beautiful weather, but there's no breeze, and uh, I'm suffering. It's only about six, seven degrees, but as I'm always saying, the sun now towards the end of March. Uh, spring equinox upon us is very warm and it heats up in these corries and these glens very quickly. It's definitely a day to be taking on a lot of water and thankfully given how much rain there's been over the last couple of weeks, uh, finding it's not going to be a problem. It's often the case later on perhaps, April time, uh, Traditionally, although weather patterns have changed somewhat, you get easterly winds in early spring that keep the west coast very dry. And in recent years, uh, there's always wildfires, especially in places like Ardnamurkin and Morven, Ardgau, uh, places like that. And when you go walking that time of year, it can be weather like this, but because it's been dry for weeks, there's no water anywhere. It's Often you can hear it, underground but you can't actually get to it and it's it drives you mad uh could drive you quite insane actually that being that thirsty you're not being able to get to water so you have to take a lot more with you but for this walk here it should be fine well here we are just a little further up the burn and this is the new dam they've put in uh small scale it's a bit clean and new, so it stands out a bit at the moment, but these things tend to fade into the landscape eventually, but I don't know, it's down to personal opinion really, whether you think that's obtrusive in the landscape or not. I'm assuming, is this a fish ladder coming up here to help uh, fish? come up here to spawn, I don't know. I don't know how far, what would come up here this far. I don't know enough about fish, I'm afraid. Or uh, hydro for that matter. But um, for want of a better suggestion, I'm assuming that's for fish. And I suppose that's the concern really with hydro stuff. With anything that goes in, up in the hills is just making sure it doesn't affect the hydrology of a place, the way the water fro flows and making sure it doesn't uh, adversely impact wildlife up here because even small changes uh, in hydro development can change the humidity of a watercourse I wouldn't have thought that'd be too much of a problem up here where it's so wet anyway but um, certainly elsewhere in some places if you suddenly change the water flow and you make it a lot less uh, less of a torrent coming down a small burn you can make that place a whole lot less humid and then uh, some things will start dying Right, well, I think this is where me and the stream part company. So, uh, time to fill up with water. Well, from this side, Benmore looks wintry still, which isn't surprising, that's its north uh, and east facing. It's 
slopes. And they do pose a uh, bit of a quandary for people, I suppose, deciding whether or not to take their ice axe and crampons with them. Something I was talking about in the last vlog on the Five Sisters about how it might be feeling like spring down in a glen, but up here, especially up there, where that snow doesn't get the sun necessarily, it'll be bulletproof pretty much until the sun gets on it. And that kind of snow can easily uh, smother sections of ridges, so maybe the ridge up there potentially. So, because approaching from uh, the west today, when I was driving in, there was hardly any snow at all you could see. You can't barely see anything from that side. There's hardly anything left on the, the west slopes. But it's a different matter up here, and there's been a publicity drive this week by the Mountaineering Council of Scotland about the dangers of heading up into the hills this time of year, because people do are lulled into a false sense of security and head up expecting summer conditions and you may well be in a t-shirt but the snow is still very much thinks it's winter and there has been a fatality this week sadly on Ben Lomond uh, I think somebody slipped off uh, some very firm hard packed snow and somebody else had to call out the mountain rescue because they had micro spikes uh, on their shoes rather than crampons and they're just not sufficient. These are those little spikes you can have for walking down pavements essentially. Not good enough for a hill like these, big hills like these. So I do have my ice axe with me today, my crampons. Even though you sort of feel a bit, you feel like maybe it's overkill. When you're heading up on a day like this and it's so warm, verging on hot, and you think I can't possibly need these can I? But you just don't know what you're going to find up there. It might look, you might look at it now and think, it looks like it's mostly in the black, coming up the ridge. But once you get up there, it'll be a lot steeper than it looks down here. And uh, if you haven't got the proper kit to give you protection when you're going up steep slopes, you should either turn around and head back if there's no other alternative. Uh, actually, that's the only option. Because <laughs> you could be crossing a big uh, patch of snow and it might only be 10 meters long and that might be all it takes for you to slip and uh, injure yourself or worse so it might feel like extra weight it might feel like a bit of a burden but it's still worth taking them until the vast majority of the snow is gone I certainly don't want to take any chances so because the final ascent up to Benmore is famously steep so I think it is a, a point, a lesson worth uh, pressing home, which is why I've done it in two consecutive vlogs. <clears throat> right, that's the pass. And while that feels like an achievement in itself, coming all the way up from down there. There is of course a lot further to go to get to that little notch up there and then over to, to Ben Moore. But I think at the very least I'm a bit of a sit down and a sandwich and up here over to the other side. You can see a shadow on the rock there. I can't focus on the actual bird, but uh, I was just sat here, minding my own business, munching on a sandwich, and there was this whooshing noise, like this shh behind me, and I thought it was one of these sort of vortices, vortexes, these vortices that spin off, you know, when the wind spins off the hill. I thought it was one of those, and I just turned around, and there was a, an eagle plunging, just there, right there, and uh, calling as well. I've never heard an eagle before. I've never had one that close I've actually heard it, but it was right there. I just didn't have time to grab the camera or the camcorder and actually get a picture of it, but it's over there somewhere. Oh, there it is. I can see it now. Actually, there's a couple of them. Way out there. That was amazing. I've never ever seen or heard anything like that. 
And it's funny, I was sat here just this moment, looking over here, scanning over here. I could hear a couple of ravens. I was thinking, oh, no eagles. And then seconds later, this behind me. Just fell out the sky there. Incredible. It was trying, I, don't know if, I don't know if it was trying to, it was going for something down here maybe, I don't know. But I only heard it because it's so absolutely still. It's dead calm. There's not a breath of wind. Which is why it was just so strange hearing it. I was quite, I almost jumped. It was so loud behind me. Anyway, my gate is open. Just giving my legs a bit of an airing, letting my my poor sweaty back dry a little bit. But uh, I think it's, might as well head off up here. Ooh, steep. Right, moving off. The, the eagle went over there, but there are now no way I can focus in on it. But there's three of them, sort of rising, circling. Three eagles over there now. <laughs> Just minutes after I said there were none. Oh, it's looking a bit imposing from this angle, but I'm sure there's lots of foreshortening going on. So it's fine. Quite soft because it's been in the sun, but uh, often you can get just a soft layer on top that you can step through. Your boots will grip through, and then it takes you to the harder stuff underneath, and you're sliding. So it's often best not to chance it. Uh, this enormous glen here, yeah, quite incredible view opening up down there. It's Glen Clackegg, and it goes all the way down to Loch Bar, which is down there. It's funny, you think of, you think of Mull and hill walk, you tend to think of Ben Moore, but wonderful hills, these very smooth uh, hills connected by quite high ridges. Wonderful walking to be had. Next time. Almost there. Actually, stopped for half an hour. I was sat down there for a few minutes, but then I was chatting to a bloke who came down who was camping. They went down just there, the other side of Ben Morris. Had a nice chat with him for 20 minutes. Uh, but moving on now, almost, almost there. There we are, summit of Achir. The way ahead, along this ridge, which does get steep by all accounts at the top. Ah, oh, it's lovely, it's warm. Well, I hope it is just foreshortening, because it looks it's quite uh, formidable from here. Might be one dicey section up here where, I don't know, going over snow up there. Much of that cloud that was up there is burnt off. So uh, it's quite hot now. So Lawrence of Arabia hats out. Not far to go, but it does look very, very rocky. Well, it is steep, as promised. Lots of scree. I'm really not a fan of scree. 
That's where I've come from. That's where I'm going. One hell of a situation. Getting up high now above uh, here. Quite incredible, really. It did look steep from down there, but it's uh, it's an all fours job. As you can see, there's still a lot of icicles hanging off, so it's it's obviously in that quarry uh, where it's getting in uh, below freezing every night. It's very much still winter here. I mean, it looks certain death falling down there. That's going to be rock hard snow. Scary. It actually comes as something as a surprise after, after all that steepness to emerge onto just what is essentially just a, a high plateau. Oh, it's amazing. It actually has the feel of um, Ben Nevis in a strange way. It's got that sort of it's got a subsidiary peak with a very shapely, nice ridge that goes to uh, quite a fine, almost a knife edge, very, and there's lots of scrambling, and then it sort of comes up in a nice graceful curve, and all the while you're given this view of this immense rocky face, almost vertical, uh, towering cliff face, in the case of Ben Nevis, you know, that famous cliff face. Um, and the same here, you get this enormous snow, snowy uh, aspect which just looks, it looks immense when you're coming up. It looks quite intimidating when you're coming up there. And then when you finally get up here, it's just this big stony, rocky plateau. So, uh, and that's like Ben Nevis too, because when you emerge onto the top of Ben Nevis, it is, after being so steep, suddenly you're out into this enormous amounts of space. All you've been able to see for the longest while is just your hands in front of you as you're scrambling up boulders. But when you get up here, when you get up to the top of Ben Nevis, it does feel like, suddenly you're into the open and you can see, you feel like you've been freed. But it is this uh, summit plateau of boulders and scree and rock. Um, so it feels like Ben Nevis in miniature in a way. Although it's not to take anything away from Ben Moore because it does have a feel of a much bigger hill because all the surrounding land is very low um, looking out to sea and it starts from sea level. It does feel like a really big hill. You really, I mean, I'm feeling it because uh, I have been using all fours, I mean scrambling, so when you do that you do, I suppose, feel it a bit more when you get to the top of something. Um, feels like more of a workout, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I think at one point I thought maybe when I was really going for the Munros, I thought maybe I would have Ben Moore as my last one, but I'd hate to have got so far into the Munro list and then maybe suffered an injury or something and then and then finding out that I couldn't actually climb anymore. And I hate to think that I couldn't do, I had never done Ben Moore because I was saving it till last. Far better for me to do it now, while I'm here, while it's in glorious, glorious weather. Uh, I don't know, everyone's different. People like to save different things, I suppose. Everyone's different and likes to do things in a different order. But if you want to go up a hill, go up a hill. Don't wait for, <laughs> wait for years for the, in the likelihood that you might or might not be able to do it. Just do it now. It's definitely time for tea and cake anyway. At, uh, at the summit, actually, I just noticed there's something written in the snow. What's that say? Uh, Rax House, Rax, Ray Halls. Ray Halls was here. Ray Halls was here. Hello, Ray Halls, if you're watching. Cheers. It's quite a nice uh, 
summit shelter actually, although the walls aren't enormous to keep brutal wind off, it would be enough to hunker down. I don't usually sit down at proper summits or in summit shelters to um, to spend time or to just sit or to have lunch or whatever because it tends to be where everybody else wants to go. So it's usually all this open space, massive open space, and then everyone clusters around one tiny little spot on the hillside, which, which is fine. It's fine. It's just don't necessarily want that all the time. But I think on the Ben Moor on a Wednesday, in the, when the schools haven't aren't off yet, and we're out, we're not in Easter holidays, then uh, I'm sure the likelihood of anybody else turning up out of nowhere is slim. I know there's somebody else coming up the ridge at the moment, but they're going to be a little uh, a wee while yet. Right, I've had a good, almost an hour actually, at the top. Uh, which is quite unlike me actually, I usually, I'll stay for about half an hour, but I stayed for an hour today because, well, look at, why not? It's a beautiful day. But it's time to go, I think. Slow plod back down that way. <laughs> 